If you've been watching my channel long enough or my Instagram where you've probably also seen this on a couple of pictures, you know I try and tell um, who a product is for or who I think might enjoy a product. You know, the Icon 7300 is, is universally a good HF radio, and if you're interested in HF, it's really easy for me to recommend that. If someone's looking for super ultra portable, well, maybe that's not the best radio. Where I'm going with this is the GPD Pocket 2 is, for me, very cool, but it fills very specific niches within operating amateur radio. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cover a little bit of a review of what the actual computer does, how I use it, and then why some of those things probably won't work for you. GPD is a Chinese computer manufacturer and the Pocket 2 is the second iteration of their Pocket line. GPD up until the creation of the Pocket and some of the more recent computers focused mainly on laptops that had Joy-Con or joystick integration for people that wanted to play computer games in a highly portable platform. The Pocket and then its later brother, the Pocket 2 here, it came with just the design of being a computer. It's touchscreen. This one that I have, I bought used. It is an M37Y30. It has eight gigs of RAM and it is a 128 solid state drive in it. For ham radio things, it has two USB 3.0 ports and one USB-C port. And the USB-C port is its charging port. And fun fact, it charges off of 4.5 volts. So if you had a power film power saver, something with an integrated solar panel, you could charge this computer while on the go. You can also charge a 705 off of this, so they actually work out really well together, but let me continue. Now, even though this is the Pocket 2 line of computers, there's not one hardware spec. In fact, there is an updated model, which is the one behind me on the screen there, and that is a M38100Y. That is a different processor, and they've actually kicked up the SD size to 256 gigs. They also have a cool black um, case on it. I like the black more. I'd, I'd probably swap for the silver. Uh, but I paid $500 for mine, and that one goes over 700. So already a big number for a tiny laptop. Rounding out the I.O., there is also a micro SD card slot. For I.O. sakes, it's actually pretty useful. There's a lot of different ways to connect your laptop to it. Of course, there is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well. Now this screen is seven inches and it is a touch screen. You might notice as looking at this that there is no trackpad, there is no mouse. In fact, how you mouse around is this little nub here where my finger is. It's kind of like an optical sensor. And it's, if you think about a mouse upside down, what does a mouse have in the bottom? It has an optical sensor. Your finger is basically the mousing surface on this little tab. And then on the left-hand side of the computer, there are left and right-hand click buttons or left and right click buttons. So you would literally hold it up like this, mouse around and then left and right click with your left thumb. Uh, you can also click with the little sensor, but I found that to be really difficult. The mouse like skitters off and then you, you can't really do a good click. I'm used to this, but uh, this is totally something that you would have to get used to if you were interested in this uh, computer. Performance wise, I've had no problems running amateur radio software with this and multiple different types of software. JSA Call, WSJTX, you know, not at the same time. Uh, and then running like Grid Tracker and my logging program, running automatic logging for my contacts. That works fine, it works fast, it does, it does just fine in, in all those spaces. In a lot of ways, it's actually a, a pretty nice computer as far as performance goes, if you're factoring in the small size. All right, overviews out of the way. Why, sh why am I telling people not to buy this? Well, to be so small, there are a couple of things going on with this computer that may be a big problem for you. The first one that is the biggest issue for portable operators is the screen brightness. It has a very dim screen. It is so dim that you kind of have to put like something over your head or sit in a really nice shaded area if you're going to run it outdoors. I'm talking even the ambient light when you're under a shade could be enough to wash out the screen. So you may need to run in high contrast mode or do something else to make the screen usable in a very bright setting. Issue two, because this is so portable and so small, the keyboard layout is wild. It is not a joy to type on this keyboard. You do have to get used to it. Things like tab keys have been moved in places that you wouldn't expect. There are no F keys, and some keys are just straight gone, like the right side shift key. 
Issue three, this puppy runs hot. Uh, if you think about it, there's not that much mass on the, the laptop itself. You can't get rid of a lot of that heat. The fan runs constantly, even in just sitting here with Windows on. And this does run Windows 10, which is nice. There is actually an intake fan or grill for the fan right here, and the exhaust blows out the back. But if you notice, the, the laptop has a bit of a kick here, and so you kind of need it always bent so that the venting gases comes out on the top and out the bottom. It is warm at all times. Um, here is a thermal probe of how hot this thing is. It gets kind of hot, it's straight up, just in just sitting there. And the more you work with it, um, it's gonna get a lot hotter. And it could have thermal throttling, which will make the performance drop. Again, that's not really that big a deal for amateur radio operators, but I mention it just in case that somebody's gonna sit there with it on their lap or holding it in their hands and realize pretty quickly, oh, this is pretty warm to the touch, um, getting to the point of almost being un uncomfortable. With those complaints said, this is a good laptop if you want something portable. And by portable, I mean like close it up, put it into a small sling bag type of thing and just go. Because that's like, I mean, it, it's gone. It's in the little tablet sleeve back here for like seven inch tablets. It, it just absolutely disappears in bags. You know, I like tablets and I like highly portable things that, that allow us to connect radios to computers to add functionality. This does that, it absolutely does that. But there is a cost associated with that. And that's part of the reason why I'm making this video. I get asked all the time, what is that tiny laptop you're using? Usually on Instagram, oddly enough, because I post a picture of it and people just go nuts. I'm showing a radio and it'll be off in the distance and somebody says, what is that thing? It is fun, it is cool, it is ham sexy, but it has drawbacks. And I really, really hope you consider that before you go dropping, what, 700 something dollars. I'll post the link to the Amazon. It is my Amazon affiliate store. I do get a cut if you do buy one of these or anything that's on my Amazon store or just anything you buy on Amazon. If you take the link, just be warned. Uh, please be warned. That is the only thing that matters to me. I'm, I'm happy if you like it and you, and you use it and it's good for you. It's good for me. It might not be for you though, particularly you know if you've, if you've got a harder time seeing or you do a lot of outdoor portable activations where you don't have shade. The heat could be an issue if the sun's bearing right down on top of it. That's going to get really hot. Those are all things you should consider before you go out and pick up this laptop. I'll leave it with this though. Uh, I have not encountered a situation where this doesn't work like any other laptop, including my Toughbook uh, CFC2, which is my $320 uh, tank of a laptop, but it's it's really light. It's super light. Uh, this does everything too. This goes with me in a lot of situations where I'm packing much larger. Like if I'm doing a portable live stream, this is the laptop I bring to connect to the radios. $320 versus, you know, 500 U's. Again, I bought this used. You can just see the size difference. It's, it's ridiculous. But this is way more expensive. This is easier to use. This is tinier. Ah, it's, it, it's tricky, right? So I hope you, you do, uh, do think about this if, before you go out and buy the GPD Pocket 2. And hopefully some of this is answering the questions that people have had. Touchscreen, Windows 10, uses all the ham radio applications and does it fairly well. So for that, I give it a thumbs up, but its accessibility, just for anyone really, can be on the tougher side. And you really need to know that before you go in. Anyway. Post your questions on the GPD Pocket 2 or just whatever ham radio questions in the chat and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. If this was helpful to you or you think it might be helpful to other people, make sure you click that thumbs up button. It tells YouTube to put this in front of other people. And if you enjoyed this video and you have not already, please subscribe. I live stream every Saturday, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time for Ham Nation. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Ham Radio Crash Course and I'll talk to you later. See ya.